What's up, Camp and Cooks? We are going to get these two Coleman stoves out of these boxes so we can run a test on them. We have a campy trip coming up in a few days, and um, I want to test these things out and make sure they're running properly uh, so I don't get any surprises. So we have the Even Temp Camp Stove. This one is 28,000 BTUs. And we have the Triton Camp Stove, which is 22,000 BTUs. Let's get these out of the box and so we can play with them a little bit. So we're going on a camping trip. And one of the things um, I noticed last year is our camp stoves we're having a lot of issues. One, the top of it wouldn't even close. It was, it's really a pain to move it around. The other one, one of the burners is out. So I only had one burner and the one burner that was working was having issues. So I knew that I needed to buy new camp stoves for this season. And so we picked these two up at the Coleman, uh, Coleman outlet down in Tennessee and I'll leave a link down in the description with our shopping trip at the Coleman outlet um, and what we got is we got two different sizes one of the reasons I got two different sizes is sometimes I want to cook a big pot so I wanted a bigger stove but also sometimes I just want to haul out a smaller one so we do have a stove inside the RV but I don't cook that much in there, particularly when I know that it's going to be very fragrant because that thing, it's really hard to get that smell out of the RV. So things like bacon and cooking burgers and all that fun stuff, I tend to do outside one because I like outdoor cooking and two, um, so it doesn't smell like bacon the entire weekend um, while we're camping. So we got these two and you ask, I don't camp, so I don't need a camping stove. And one of the things I can say is you need a camping stove because they are great to use on your deck. So if you want to go out on your deck and do some grilling and make some side dishes, you can do it all out there if you have a camp stove. Also, they're great in times of emergencies. So if your power goes out, um, something like that, you will have a stove to cook on as long as you keep enough um, fuel. So what we got is an even temp Coleman stove. This is a 28,000 BTU stove, and it's got a lot of different uh, interesting features to it. We also got this Triton, which is a smaller uh, stove it has 22,000 BTUs what we're gonna do is we are gonna be taking these out on the deck to do uh, two quick um, initial runs on there to make sure that I like them and make sure everything's ready to go for our camping trip so the first stove is the Triton this is a two burner stove um, it's 22,000 BTUs it has their perfect heat system and a wind blocker. So this is your wind blocker. I've had a stove that didn't have a wind blocker and it's a nightmare to cook with, let me tell you. I bought a really cheap stove at a local discount store and I could barely cook on it because the wind was so bad, it was constantly blowing out the flame and um, it was just horrible to cook with. Especially when you're trying to simmer and if you need to keep it down a little bit. Yeah. So here's the stove, the wind blocker. It can hold two nice sized pots. Um, so let's get this baby open. Camp cooking. Okay. Okay, so let's 
get it out of the box. Wow, it's nice and shiny. It won't stay like this for too long. <laughs> and you have this little buckle thing. Huh, I don't know. It's better than the one. The other one I had, you just push it down and it, it had like a latch here and it just closed, but the latch broke. So we had to use a bungee cord. Yeah, it was uh, horrible. So here's our stove. So let's see. So the way these flaps work is they have this little um, metal thing on there and all you do is bring it out and stick the metal thing in here. Okay. <laughs> okay. And we have our second one here. Lord have mercy. Okay. Let's take that off of there. Okay, here's our instructions. And here is our um, grate. Now let me cut this off of here real quick. And here, this is the thing for that's going to attach to the fuel line. And here's our grate. So you just put this here. Cool. Okay, so we're going to take this little cap off, and this goes on here. The regular just has to be coming up. So you stick it in the hole and you screw this onto here. And you're ready to go. So a quick warning, these stoves should only be used outdoors. You do not want to use them indoors. I hooked up the gas just to demonstrate it, but we're taking this outside and we're going to be using this outside. You do not want to use one of these stoves inside your house. So let's get the even temp out of the box. Okay, so here's the even temp. And this is a significantly bigger stove, obviously. And this one has something really interesting. This has this even temp. And what that does is it allows you to turn the burners on all the way across. So you can put three smaller items on here or just have the two burners and have two bigger items. So it's sort of like getting a three burner stove in this one stove. So let's get this out of here. Three independently adjusted burners, so it's, you can actually adjust it somehow. It looks like you got a big knob there, big knob there, yeah. and the little guy there controls the middle somehow. Traditional. So you could put a, a griddle across there. Put a griddle across there, yeah. Yeah. So let's see. This will give you an idea the size difference. If you want something, you know, that's compact, I don't think this is a stove that you'll go for. But if you want a little bit more room, this is your stove, right? Look, look, how, well, it look how it closes. Huh? Oh, yeah. And this one closes like my old one. It's got this button, which I didn't like. So, wow. Okay, so it's got like these wing things, wingedings, and um, let's get all this packaging off of here. Instructions, there's your middle burner. So these wings connect a little differently. There's a little uh, 
notch thing, you just put this in there as opposed to the way the other one was. Yeah, if you don't need a wind guard, you can keep these down, and this can serve as like a little shelf to place things while you're cooking. So that's cool. So we have our... Ah. We have our grate. This stove is significantly bigger than the other one, I can tell you that. So if you want to cook like big pot of chili or something like that, this is probably the one you want to go with. I'm not sure what these things are. Let's see. There's an actual battery. I don't know what that goes to. And here's our um, thing for the gas. So we flip this thing over. We have to put these little feet on here and we have to put a battery in here. So this thing has an electronic um, ignition to turn your stove on and it requires a battery. They gave you a little battery. So we're going to go ahead and put this in here. When you're done with this, you, you're gonna wanna take that battery out there if you're not gonna use it for quite some time. Some of our stoves, um, you know, they can sit around, especially over the winter, so you wanna take that battery out of there. Okay, it has this little tiny bag of screws, so just be careful. Uh, we almost lost this thing. <laughs> and look at how small these screws are. They're dinky, right? So we're gonna put these feet on here. So there's just a little peg on here. The peg goes in this hole, and then you have where the screw goes in. Oh, Mr. Handyman. What? I didn't get it in there. Pivot this around. In other words, like Amy says, put this guy in the peg hole, and you think you have it in the hole, but just wiggle it, and you'll hear it go thud. Now you're in the hole, now you can tighten a little screw, and now the Maytag repairman has something to do. My handyman went on strike here. Let's see if I can do one. You think I can? I think I can, I think I can. Pivot. Pivot. Make sure it's in the I'm hole. pivoting, I'm pivoting! Did it make a click? No. Ooh. Let me inspect, because I don't want to blow up in a ball of fire. You can get a little tighter, boo-boo. See this? One doesn't have much gift. Just a little tighter. OK, here you go. All right. Here, He's always going to criticize it. <laughs> See? See, Martha? <laughs> oh, Amy, you're doing a really good job. <laughs> Okay, I kind of like how it's got the feet. It raises us up a little bit. Um, this is a big stove, guys. So if you want something that you can cook a nice big pot of spaghetti on, this is your stove. Mm -hmm. Wow. But look how heavy duty this grate is. Yeah. I mean, this stove is like twice the price of the other one, so... Um, hmm. But if you go to your outlet store and it's on sale, it might only yeah. cost half. Yeah. So, that's so if you cool. live near one. So, Camp and Cooks, what we're going to do is we're going to do a BTU test. So, I'm going to take the smaller uh, stove, we're going to take this bigger stove, and we're actually going to drag out our camp chef that hooks up to a uh, propane tank from the barbecue. We're going to do a BTU test. We're going to see what's the difference from the 22 to the 28 to the 50,000 BTU cam stoves to see, you know, maybe you want to get a larger stove because it can drive your pots a little better than the smaller ones. So stay tuned for that because I really believe that even if you don't camp, it's important to have one of these propane stoves so that 
yes, in the case of an emergency, but also if you want to go out and grill on the deck or you want to go have a picnic or something. Party. Party, right? You don't need to camp to own a camp stove. They're great to have around for just those occasions, right? So stay tuned for the BTU test. We are going to get the RV out. We're going to give it a bath. We're going to load up and we're going to go out to the campground and we're going to have a good old time. So stay tuned. We're going to do some summer cooking. We're going to do some camp cooking and we got a big water fight going on that um, we're going to get some pretty good footage on because I got a couple GoPros to put on our golf cart for the uh, water fight. So stay tuned for that. Um, we're going to have a good time. So if you're interested and want to take a look at these stoves, I'll put links down in the description. Um, this is really interesting. We'll see what's good and bad on each of these stoves when we use them. And um, yeah, looking forward to it. So if you like this video, please subscribe below. Leave me a comment and a like. And also visit my brand new website, amylearnstocook.com. You can catch me on social media at Pinterest and Twitter at Amy Learns to Cook. On Facebook, Join my Facebook group and let me know what you like to do when you go camping. What do you like to cook? Because we're trying to think of some things to cook and something that might be interesting uh, when we go um, this upcoming week. It's facebook.com slash groups slash Amy Learns to Cook. And also you can catch me on Instagram at Cooking with Amy. In the trial of does Amy like the edible food spoon, the prosecution rests or ask the first question miss amy did you today eat something that was related to these little spoons here was that made out of cookies and did you pile some ice cream on it yes did you in your own words say uh, you kind of like these no i hated it vote for me edible spoon Vote for me, vote for me. Hot dog steamer, vote for me, vote for me. Edible spoon, vote hot for dog, me. Hot dog, hot dog. Yum, yum.